what's up, fantasy people? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the lucky bastard Ethan Wolf, coming at you live from uh, the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Football Show. Owie. Today's episode. Say hi, Jason. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is uh, Thursday Night Takeaways, Week 15, or Beer Time Breakdown is what we call it. You know, it's slang term around here. In, uh, you know, Tyler's apartment. <laughs> this is actually a house, but there's some movie where they say, you know, <laughs> I forget what movie that is. Is it known around in uh, my apartment? Um. Anyways, huge game last night, Jason. Did you watch the whole thing? Yeah. I uh, I had to watch it. Did a bear, I did a very big, uh, big prediction. So I was uh, watching it and throwing up in my shoe at the same time. I know that's what we were texting each other. <laughs> I was like, your reputation is on the line, Jason, starting now. This is it. This makes or breaks the show. And I can't wait to get into detail about that, too. Yeah, well, dude, it's almost like, uh, you know, if Brock Purdy was forced to. Anyways, you want to take a second and thank uh, or tell the people how they can help the show? Yeah, um, you guys can help us out if we could get some likes and if we could get some subscriptions. We got some wonderful oh. comments there. Uh, I think Tyler's got a couple of shout outs. One shout out that I want to do is Deshaun Edwards. Uh, he was uh, showing much love in the in the comment. I appreciate it. You know, we love doing this stuff and we like hearing like positive feedback. Let's just uh, keep going. Um, he mentioned how, how like he, how real we are, and I was like, you know what? That's Tyler's way, man. He's like, we're gonna be a real people fantasy show, fantasy show. We do this for the people, and the people have spoken, Tyler, and they're like, they like what we're doing. Also, before the shout outs, uh, we have an Instagram. I'm going to just point right here, and hopefully in the future we could get it to... I think uh, it's a Michelob Ultra. Oh. <laughs> I got a Bud Light and a Michelob Ultra. My dad seriously bought a 30-pack of Bud Light on Thanksgiving, and he bought he only drank two of them. And he's like, Tyson, you can have the rest. I'm like, all right, my 18 again? I guess I'd go back to Bud Light, and I have to buy beer for a while but uh we got an instagram if you want more content some more videos um if instagram's more your thing our tag is a. Uh... <coughs> sorry i still got the black <laughs> <coughs> oh man woo uh the uh the F- fantasy football show F- fantasy footballing show oh my gosh our tag is the fantasy footballing show on Instagram. Oh my Ooh. god, Jason, that's hilarious, dude! You're all and our tag is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're all man. You're talking about keeping it real and stuff, and I was like, sometimes I wish I didn't keep it so real. Like I feel like my life is an episode of the Dave Chappelle Show. Just when keeping it real goes wrong, I right. should just walk away. <laughs> yeah. I should just walk away 99% of the time. But we don't. Um, but anyways, dude. Yeah, so you predicted, you know, Brock Purdy. That was your big hot take. And uh, my big hot take was DK Metcalf, you know, getting hyper-targeted and actually succeeding. Looks like one of us was right, Jason. Um, Where are you going? I got a te- I got I got a whole epilogue I need to share with you. You have an epilogue? It's like the beginning of a book, right? This <laughs> well, is the beginning. Is that the when end. you die? Uh. Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna die. I am gonna no. die. I can't remember if an epilogue was the beginning of a book or if it's when the th- no yeah. eulogy. <laughs> it's a eulogy. Isn't an epilogue like kind of a long? I don't know, paragraph or... Dude, I don't know. You know what happens when I am not sober is... my I don't think my brain cells connect properly. <laughs> anyway. 
let's get down to brass tasks. Hey, this is, this is how I felt yesterday when Purdy hit that 58, 58 yard uh, touchdown to George Kittle. But he's doing surprisingly, he's doing inspirational music in this. I was more doing un uninspirational music, and I was just like, "Screw you, Purdy! Screw I'm you!" Trying think, I'm trying to think of what uninspirational music would be. I mean, I had uh, something in my head. Sleep with one eye open. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places. Voodoo. I don't know. <laughs> hey, dude. I used to work out to the voodoo song, so don't, don't hate on Godsmack. I love I love Godsmack. Whatever, man. Whatever. Okay. So I had a bust and a pause on Purdy. It was like, uh, I felt like it was like a big statement I was making because most of everybody was going to uh, start this guy who was going to scream him. That's what I was hearing. That was the chatter. That was the cheddar I was hearing. So I said he was going to be a bust. I was thinking more of like 13, 14 points. Uh, he got more than that. He got, in most leagues that don't do bonuses, he got 16 points. In our league, there's a bonus for a 50-yard touchdown, so he got 19. So right now I'm speaking for most leagues. In most leagues, Tyler – how would you feel if your quarterback got you 16 points in the first round? You know, in the yeah, in the first round of the playoffs, no, that's not good. I remember when uh, Aaron Rodgers got me what was it nine points one year, and then he got me like five points the other year, and that's when I was like, I don't care about quarterbacks, but now I do care about quarterbacks after this year. But anyways, no, you're right, dude. And the problem is, it's not like he's not producing at a good, you know, I mean, everything, all his stats are amazing except for. They don't need him to throw the ball. So that was a that was a type of game I I figured this was gonna be. And it, for the most part it was. It was a running game and a defensive game on the 49ers side. Um it just so happened that there was a breakdown in Seattle's uh secondary where he was able to get that second touchdown. I I was more per predicting that he was gonna get two touchdowns. But I also thought he was going to throw like an interception or two or maybe even a fumble. It looked like it was going to happen there for a second when Diggs had a chance to intercept the ball. And for some reason, he – I don't know. He just dropped it. And uh, that's why he's a defensive back, right? They don't got the hands. But either way, it's always those, you know, inches. The game, It's a game of inches. And he was able to produce – uh Minus bonuses in most leagues, he got 217 yards, two touchdowns, which is 16 points. Um, I'm still not happy with that. He, I don't think he was a bust, but I still think he should have been a pause player because, honestly, if I wanted somebody to get me 16 points in the playoffs, I would have started Daniel Jones, who <laughs> averaged during the season, right? Or Aaron Rodgers, who's averaging around 15 points a game. I had Aaron Rodgers where he had like seven straight uh, 16 point games for us. And I dropped them, right? I don't want my quarterback to be giving me 16 points. I want him to be giving me points that's going to make me win that week, especially in the first round of the playoffs and move on. I don't want my quarterback getting 16 points. I don't think it was a bust, but I still like the fact that I said pause on him. This yeah, one, yeah. I Basically. mean, he got he got as many yards as uh as Geno Smith pretty much, and you know half the attempts. I mean, kind of. Yeah, I mean, twenty less attempts, but still, dude. And uh, I th so it's not like Brock. I think Brock Purdy and so right here, dude. Like they were just he's definitely the most poised rookie I've, I've ever had, Kyle Shanahan. So and uh, coming out of college, I kept on playing like um, his strengths, and his strengths were like a uh, poise in the pocket, which he has. Moving people with his eyes, you saw that when he was like, oh, fake, fake. That looked like Aaron Rodgers, which is kind of funny Um, because you saw that first touchdown, right? When he looked fake, fake, and then touchdown, <clears throat> even though nobody was even close. But you could tell he was nervous in the beginning, 
like he was kind of like a like there was slants and some stuff. He was throwing behind wide receivers. I could tell. But then it was almost like he then he started like placing balls. I like Brock Purdy. Um, I don't think that I think that Trey Lance should be a little bit worried. <clears throat> but you know how I said that he looked like Aaron Rodgers on that one play? Well, Brock Purdy joins Aaron Rodgers as the only quarterback since uh, at least 1950 to have a passer rating of 115 plus in each of their first two starts. So he has a lot of I mean, it's not as mobile, mobile. Let's get mobile. Mm-hmm. As uh, Aaron Rodgers, but I uh, dude, he's he has a lot of similar quality. He doesn't have a cannon like Aaron Rodgers, but you don't ha- you don't need any of that in Kyle Shanahan's offense, regardless. So I think that they might, dude. They're gonna have to keep Trey Lance. They have so much invested in him, but it's just I don't know, man. We'll we'll see. There's still a lot of football left, dude. We're talking. He needs to go through the playoffs to up up to up seat or upset. I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. I'm pretty messed up. Um, Trey Lance, unthrown. <laughs> Who was that, Jason? Back in the day, Randy Moss. Randy, Randy Moss. Yeah, I could. I agree with you. Um, I think there's definitely now going to be a quarterback controversy in um, San Francisco, but I think they're going to. I believe they're going to stay with Trey Lance just because they have so much invested in him, and. Kind of the crappy thing is now is that Purdy is uh, throwing up production. He looks, and like I said, he looks better than Jimmy G. I said that in my last video. He looks better. He's younger. Jimmy G is hurt again. It's They got to get rid of Jimmy G. The only thing is, I think they're going to stay with Trey Lance and the talent of Purdy uh, developing more of a quarterback is going to not happen after this year, depending how they do in the playoffs. I mean, if they go and take him to the Super Bowl, it's going to be hard to say, like, oh. okay, Purdy's going to be our backup behind Trey Lance. But um, I feel like if they stick with Trey Lance, Purdy's uh, – his skill set is going to be wasted on the bench as the number two quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers because they still have a hold of him for on his rookie contract for another four or five years. Yeah, and you kind of wonder what they could get for Trey Lance if they traded him away. Um because you know they wouldn't want Trey Lance on the bench with uh the Sprock with Brock Purdy starting. That'd be pretty crazy. Um, but you know, I want to do point something out because you're all now there's a con- but now there is a there was a you said now there is a quarterback controversy with the 49ers. But now I'm, I'm I was just thinking first off, I was like, there already was because Jimmy G, you know, they're like, no, G- we're gonna keep Jimmy G and get rid of Trey Lance after this year, maybe. And now that's dude, Jimmy G is literally never go and play for the 49ers again. That's what I got out of last night too. Yeah. Um, what you said, everything about Purdy is uh, pretty good. He looked very, he looked very poised in the pocket. Also helps when you have a dominant offensive line and he's not getting pressured. I think he was only sacked once in the game, but I feel like there was nobody in his face. He is faster than Jimmy G. So he's able to scramble out of the pocket some. Um, and he's also cheaper. Than Jimmy G. Um, I imagine uh, Mr. Relevance making a lot of money on their well, contract. Dude, you can see all the people are going to have to pay on their defense. Um, the 49ers, like the Samoan, that little Samoan guy, uh, I forget his name. He's, I watched the first game of the year and he was amazing. And like, dude, he's been so good throughout. You know, he's got that uh, the hair. Troy Paul Malu hair. I forget his name. I should know his name because I, I like him so much. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, dude. But like uh, one thing I thought about and then I saw a a report on was um, they're going to have the defensive player of the year in Nick Bosa, probably. They're going to have the comeback player of the year, Christian McCaffrey. And now they're talking about rookie of the year. We don't know. And coach of the year with Kyle Shanahan. And now they're talking about rookie of the year already. If like say they if he wins the Super Bowl or, you know, or even gets deep in the playoffs, it could be. I think they announced Rookie of the Year after. When do they announce Rookie of the Year, Jason? Uh, it's like the week before the Super Bowl. Dude, he can make a case for it. Because uh, Brees Hall got injured. I mean, I know that there's some really good defensive players right now, but still. Because, I mean, um, you know, Aiden Hutchinson and Sauce Gardner are the top two on the other ones. But, dude, the 49ers, I'm just trying to say, they're so dominant. And you, I was watching that game, and I was trying to, like, I was like, all right, blur my eyes and just focus on the white, you know? And I'd watch it, 
And dude, the white would always be like, it was insane. Like their offensive line had so much push. They were on the second level, like so much. It was ridiculous. Uh, uh, to go off of that too, um, their second string nose tackle, Brian Mooney, Mooney. Oh, yeah. He went out or I'm like, Oh, well, there is another injury added to the defensive line that is just going to help benefit the run game and protect Purdy. Well, the Alex Woods, ever since they lost Alex Woods, they haven't been able to start to, I mean, I don't know if his name is Alex Woods. He's a huge, like 350 pound, 35 year old dude. I talked about him in the beginning of the year, but like, uh, ever since then, they, 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 it's like, I swear, dude, their team hasn't been the same. Um, it's like, that Alex Woods injury and the Kenneth Walker injury is like pretty bad. And then I saw on that broadcast last night that that Kenneth Walker ankle has been an issue since high school. Did you see that? No. And then I was like, uh, okay, dude, this guy went from like, I wanted him like, I want him first round to like, maybe I should consider like, maybe. I don't know, dude. Anyways. And you know, the Seattle was starting two rookie tackles last night too, right? Did you see that? Yeah, I, d- I did see that. And that's part of the reason why Purdy was able to do as well as he did. And Christian McCaffrey, he's, he was able to rush over 100 yards. He did his thing. Like, the battle of the trenches was definitely won by the 49ers on the offensive side and defensive side. Geno Smith, you know, he had they had three sacks against him. But he, every time, I feel like Boza was right there to knock the ball out. He was getting pressured. The pocket was always collapsing on him. Um, I really like that left tackle for the uh, Seattle Seahawks cross. He's a rookie, and he was, like, trying to fight Bosa. I I like that. But, dude, Bosa was just so strong, man. You saw how low he was getting. Like, Bosa, when he gets gets going like that, dude, I wish he had a better touchdown celebration because he he is awesome. Um, But, you know, I said said Geno Smith was going to have, like, 250 or 260 and two touchdowns, two interceptions. He should have had – you know, 241 and one. You saw that dropped interception. I mean, that was obvious. Same thing with Purdy. He had a terrible pass that should have been intercepted. Um, actually, you know what? Geno Smith did have an interception, but it was a flag on it was some BS flag. It was that was that the uh roughing the passer call? I think so. And it he had a it was an interception return for a touchdown, but because of the penalty, they wiped it. Yeah. So like uh dude, so when I because you know, I thought I've been. I was talking about how the Seahawks, uh, they've been starting slow, and then 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 they have been having to come back from behind and making a lot of mistakes. So I was like, I expect a couple, especially against this defense. You know, I I expect a couple a couple of um, interceptions, but I thought they were going to like succeed. And I thought DK Metcalf. You know, I was saying that. Um, you know, hyper targeted, physically gifted a uh, wide receiver like uh, Tyree Kill. I mean, Tyree Kill just blew this just blew this team up. But I didn't count on that. Um, What's it, dude? Ward. His last name was Ward. Ch- uh, Chevarius Ward. That guy is physical, man. And if you get physical with DK Metcalf, apparently you can stop him. So that's good to know. Because uh, if you get physical with Tyree Kill, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so uh, DK Metcalf, he is fast, but he's no Tyree Kill. Yeah, that's. That's pretty well said. I was going up against DK Metcalf this week. Um, he only got eight points, but one thing I noticed about the game is that he, he had what like seven receptions. But the thing is, it's like they they weren't downfield. You know, they were just like quick, kind of like slants or five well, yards. Around. I know, man. Yeah. Deep ball that I mean, ish that he caught, but somehow at the same time he like pulled on Ward's jersey, and they, it was an offensive pass interference, but. They, he, I think part of the problem with that is like they, he couldn't even get a chance to get it to DK Metcalf if he ran an um, an out route because he was not getting a lot of the time in that pocket. I was just gonna say, dude. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. We have a thing on this where, it, and I googled it. It doesn't matter what you do. It says when you were growing up, you should learn how to not speak at the same time. <laughs> it's hard, man. When I'm drinking. Uh, <laughs> So sorry, I muted you out for like three seconds there, Jason. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, dude, I forget what you just said. I was I was hyper focused on me muting you out and apologizing. <laughs> DK Metcalf, even on his uh, long routes, uh, Geno Smith didn't even have enough time to even throw the ball deep, dude. And so, like, you know how you were nervous for um, for like uh, 
your predictions. Well, I was like, dude, I want DK Metcalf to succeed after that. And man, that fool, uh, Geno Smith would load up. You know, you could see him like his his knee would load, everything would load, and then he would be like, oh, throw it to the Kenneth Walker. That's <laughs> like, no, man. Uh, and also, I do want to say that I predicted Kenneth Walker to get 90 yards and a touchdown just because I believed in Kenneth Walker. I, I love Kenneth Walker, but man, like I really, after listening to that stuff, I'm, he might get beat up in the year and not be really reliable towards the end. He is so amazing. It just sucks. Who does that remind you of? Like, I don't know, like a Reggie Bush, maybe he can be more durable. Like there's been running backs that have gotten more durable, uh, but Walker 79 yards and this are the second most by a running back against San Francisco, San Francisco this season. And then the most question mark, 104 by Christian McCaffrey in week five. So they traded for Christian McCaffrey, you know, the person that scored the most against them. But yeah, dude, so Kenneth Walker actually had a really good night against him considering it was still terrible. But like, if you're in a PPR, you're probably happy with Kenneth Walker. For You got you like 10 points, you know, or whatever. 11 points, 12 points. Yeah, uh, to go off of that with the whole Kenneth uh, Walker running the ball, it kind of sucks that like they it was one of those situations where it, he had a couple of long runs. He had that one long run that was probably like 30, 40 yards that really helps, but they he would get a two yard run, so it would be like second and eight, and it was like no matter what, they were not running the ball again, they were gonna go to passing, and the passing game was just god awful last night. So I feel like there was more opportunities on the field for him, they just abandoned it pretty quickly. You could definitely tell Seattle was afraid of 49ers defense because their defense was just dominating that game from the start. Yeah, dude. And the reason I thought that Gino was going to be okay was, I mean, I like Gino regardless and it's a divisional game. So I, I just kind of figured that both quarterbacks would be okay, but not anyways, <clears throat> the, 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 they had two cornerbacks that were pretty much out by the start of the game um san francisco did but now you see how deep they are and it doesn't matter man like lockett was getting his and i predicted lockett to get i think it's funny because i think i said 65 yards and no touchdown which is funny i did not think he was getting nine targets that's for damn sure uh because they had to rely well they had to rely on lockett because dude that my cousin from a, you know my brother from another mother chavarius ward was locking him down dude so yeah, they um they both ended uh DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett both ended up with seven receptions on nine targets. Uh Lockett had the better game. He outproduced them by uh 33 yards um for fancy owners, you know. But the thing is Tyler Lockett is is likely out for the year now. Yeah, like a fractured finger. Yeah. So Pete exactly. Carroll told reporters, uh, wide receiver Tyler Lockett broke his index finger during Thursday's loss to the 49ers. It is uncertain whether Lockett will be able to play again this season. That's exactly what I want to hear in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> dude, And it, they, they even said it, dude. I said it in my thing. Al Michaels is like, hey, hey uh, uh, what, what? Al Michaels said, dang it, I forgot what, oh, he said... <laughs> Tyler Lockett has that touchdown in each of the last six games. And I've never eaten anything green in my life. I'll tell <laughs> everybody about it. Um, I think we just found our short. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> Al Michaels is way – how is – I tried to see – you know, Chris Collins – Chris Collins – Chris – I can't even talk like Chris Collinsworth. Does he, does he do that? I, I got a good Chris Collinsworth. You ready? All right, let's take a look at it. This guy is killing it all year. So we're going to do a replay here and watch out. The guy gets him from behind. <laughs> you look like yourself. Well, I can't change the way I look. I was just trying to sound like you. Dude, that's what Chris Collinsworth right. He goes, all right, here we go. To us throwing right that. down. That so, was the best wide receiver move I've ever seen since since Dante Stallworth in nineteen 
99 pulled that against you know Chavarius Ward the first. <laughs> I can't. I'm all thinking about a Chavarius Ward right now because I was like, I'm gonna pronounce his name right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why they drafted him. That's why they drafted Ward is to get placed up physically against a uh, DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf did have seven, still have seven receptions, but he held him in check. There was no long ball caught. It was more under uh, quick slants, uh, f- five and out turnarounds, whatever they're called. Um, he did pretty well. And speak and speaking of that, I just want to know on your thought: Are you sold on Purdy yet, Brock Purdy? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think he's, I think his ceiling is higher than Garoppolo. I mean, you know, there's everybody's talking about that stat. I'm sure everybody's heard it, but it's like he threw what more deep touchdowns than Garoppolo in the first quarter than Garoppolo has all year. And then uh, even Christian McCaffrey saw a deeper touchdown than um, Jimmy Garoppolo, which is kind of funny. But yeah, dude. So I don't think I, I would love to see what a healthy Trey Lance all season would do. But then I drafted Trey Lance, and you saw that, dude. Like if Brock Purdy was in those first two games, he would have killed. He, I, I think he they would have won those first two games. But Trey Lance was in, and but Trey Lance is like a raw athlete. You know, Trey Lance is like. He's like, you know, I don't, he, he's got to be like our height, 250, you know, and fast. And Brock Purdy is, I think he's like six foot or maybe something. He's around six foot, 5'11 ish. But I don't care, dude. He looks fine to me. And like I kept on saying, like, but I, I, I'm listening to these experts on, um, on the radio and they're like, literally, Kyle Shanahan turns any quarterback ever into a top 12 quarterback. So it's like, you have to like look at this with, um, I think he has more potential than Matt Ryan than uh and Matt Ryan was MVP that year cuz I'm I, from what I saw last night as far as like you know like uh I I liked what he did with all that weird stuff that he did you know like I don't see Matt Ryan doing any, any of that stuff Matt Ryan's like a robot this guy's kind of like better than that and I was a little bit nervous about his accuracy cuz he was literally thrown behind like every single receiver for like the first five throws but you got to remember, he was playing in Seattle. He's a rookie. You know, he settled in. So I I had my doubts as well. I still think he might turn into a pumpkin. But as long as he's playing in this offense, I don't think it's going to matter. Okay, so um, during, during that game, there's some just like little things that I did notice. Um, he, he did start the game off 11 for 11. And then... I mean, they, they weren't nothing great. One was that trickery play that he did uh, George Kittle, which is awesome. You expect something like that from uh, Kyle Shanahan's offense. You know, that was a great play. That was awesome. When he got his first incompletion, then what you're talking about now is that I think he missed his next, like, five or six. Then the completion in the second half where he scored that 58-yard touchdown um, to Kittle – where it was a broken coverage, that safety came way too up. It was very frustrating. George Kittle also broke like two tackles again in the end zone. That's all great, right? I like I said, I like the trickery play. What happens if when this guy is actually playing against a defense with better discipline and doesn't screw up on uh on coverage and gives up 58 yards after that after he got that touchdown i believe he got that gave him like 15 points in our league he didn't he didn't score i think he scored one additional point after that he was throwing because he had an addition he had more incompletions but don't get me wrong i'm all about mr irrelevant doing well because you don't see it often right this is a good story i just don't think i am sold yet on purdy well, you're right about like, uh, so why did they do a trick play in the end zone, you know, to get that first touchdown? Yeah. So, I mean, they're protecting him still. It's all tight ends. I mean, look at the wide receivers, dude. Brandon Ayuk. When he starts throwing outside the numbers, but I'm saying potential, you know, like Matt Ryan is rookie year, you know, all this stuff. Like, that's why I'm, I'm not saying like peak Matt Ryan. Like, I don't want you to take me from that because peak Matt Ryan was hitting the outside of the numbers, like, you know, all the time. 
Um, I just like, uh, I just, I don't know, dude. I just like what I saw in the second half and everything. He got better as the game went on. Um, this is, this is how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it that like he doesn't have too high of a ceiling. He has a decent ceiling, but in that offense, when they're likely going to be playing ahead most of the time because of that defense, he's got a he's got a high floor. And that's the tempting thing about switch for Kyle Shanahan to going back to um, what's his name, dude? I drafted him. What the hell is his name, dude? Lance, Trey Lance. Uh, because his ceiling is like lightning, you know, <laughs> like it's crazy. And I do want to say, uh, speaking of lightning. I was, I was, you know, I predicted all these good stats for the uh, Seahawks. And then I was watching the game and uh, I was like, oh, yeah, dude, this is going exactly like how I thought, you know, like Seahawks are going to slow start. And then it showed the stat of uh, the 49ers have shut out the last like five opponents in the second half. And then like lightning flashed in my eyes. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, oh, no. But you know what? Like considering that, Geno Smith actually did pretty well. Considering that, how well the uh, 49ers have been adjusting to teams in the second half. Their second half was actually better. So I thought that was a positive, even though it was kind of garbage time. And then Noah Fant, dude, I apologize for the Noah Fant. I said to sit Noah Fant because, uh, pause Noah Fant because I was all about Noah Fant. I even had him on my waiver wire show, but then last last uh, week he had one target, zero reception. So, um it's playoff time and you don't want to start somebody that just had that. Yeah. You, you, can't, you, uh, you can't go against the stats, right? Numbers don't lie, but also it's just like, it's one of those things that the NFL things evolve, things change, right? Things happen. I even said, if you want to take a gamble, go for Jordan Mason in a deeper league, because last week he had, uh 11 carries and i figured this game was going to be more running which it, it technically it was because didn't mccaffrey had 26 carries i didn't think mccaffrey was going to get that many carries i thought they were going to share the load anyway jordan <laughs> That's what i thought too <laughs> jordan mason didn't even come into the game until the final three plays and it was. I'm like, man, dude, this is crazy. I thought they were going to get him more involved. That dude almost broke out for a 50-yard touchdown. And I was like, oh, this is what I'm talking about. And he gets stopped at like the one or two-yard line. It's a game of inches. NFL is insane. Like, I don't know why they gave uh, McCurry so many – or McCurry, uh, McCaffrey so many um, touches when they were in the lead most of the time, but whatever. Jordan Mason – Still looks good. I don't know why they don't give the ball to him more, but it's just one of those things, right? I was like, gamble on this guy. I mean, he still got like 50 yards or 60 yards, something like that. But it was – if he would have just broke out and scored that touchdown, because he wanted that touchdown. You know, he – the first NFL touchdown, was like, give it to me. He got caught from behind. But it, it's, it's a game of inches. NFL, we just do our best. We run the numbers. We see – we judge with our own eyes and we do the best that we can with it. Yeah, dude. Um, well, I thought a big thing coming out of this game was the usage of, of Christian McCaffrey. Cause I started Jordan Mason. I'm in the loser's bracket. You know, it doesn't matter, but I mean, I, I'm just trying to do stuff that is fun and is keeps me interested in like, I was like, I'm going to start Jordan Mason this week. Cause he's going to get at least 10 carries. Yeah. So I, I thought it was a genius for a second when, like you said, he was running towards the end zone. I was like, oh, my God. Because I said, I even said to my waiver show, you might want to start, you know, you know, Jordan Mason this week if you're in a deep league because he's going to get a lot of carries. They're going to run the hell out of the ball. But, dude, I thought a huge thing was that <clears throat> Seattle only ran the ball 14 times. So, dude, it is, like, insane when you look at the attempts versus San Francisco right now. It's just not happening. So, if you're going against San Francisco and the 49ers, in the playoffs, you better hope to God that you're uh, running back as a pass catcher because uh, you might want to pivot because this ain't happening. It is crappening. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this game, both uh, Homer <laughs> and both had uh, four receptions. 
Oh crap, Jason. You know what I just realized? I never pressed record. Yeah, right. I have you know I gotta press a number that says okay to record, right? Tyler, it even shows in the top left. <laughs> I've been saving that for like 10 minutes, man. <laughs> I was like, well, dude, I'm gonna wait till there's like a pause when he, right when he gets done with a long speech. <laughs> Damn! Well, it I thought say- I was like the host, so it didn't matter. Yeah, you had me for like one tenth of a second. I was like, "Oh shit! Oh crap!" I was like, "He, he had me for a little bit." That's the first time you cuss, Jason. I'm the cusser. I'm sorry. My hair's getting too long already. It's getting weird. Oh shoot! All right, I have what less than a minute to drink this beer. Here we go. Oh, is it is it time? We gotta end this. <laughs> if you ever want to act strong, just w- yell real weirdly and crush an aluminum can. Your fingers feel like none other. <laughs> and everyone will love you and worship you and be like, he's a strong boy. Maybe I should join a strongman competition. I did. Here's my video. Oh, shoot. Don't do it on the computer. There's still something left in that beer. Every Friday, I think I've joined the strongman by bringing in groceries. So you guys shop every Friday, huh? Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, you got to see this.